Done. Okay, welcome to the Chaos Common Working Group meeting for April 29th. Um, we have there are actually quite a few people on the call. Are there any any people who are new who haven't joined the common working group before that want to introduce themselves? You don't have to, no pressure, but if you'd like to. Would like to make you I would like to introduce myself. I think it's my second meet. So I basically had created an issue in the repository and I'm here to discuss that. Perfect, thanks Yash. Hi Yash. Hello. Anybody else? Um, I think we will just go ahead and jump right into the agenda. And the first thing we had on the agenda was um, having a look at the issues and PRs. So one of them uh, which Yash just mentioned, so we might as well might as well start with that one. Is the standardizing of the README for each working group? So, uh, Yash, do you want to just kind of walk us through this? Yeah, I think most of us have, uh, know what's been going on. I'll just give a quick recap. Um, the repositories, the working group repositories specifically, have a different structure right now for uh, README files. I was hoping we could create a standard one that could be followed by each repository. And uh, the proposal is on your screen of the structure. Um, I had uh, two, three things to discuss in it. Like yesterday, we added the newcomer info. I was thinking that instead of directly adding it, we could add, add it to the participate page on the website since there is only one common channel right now for it. I was actually thinking about uh, once this standard read is made, I was kind of thinking about taking a modified version of this and actually creating a page for it on the website. <laughs> uh, and then the Slack channel obviously would be added to the participate page. But yeah, so that, that way, uh, kind of a, this modified version of the README would exist on the website as well. Uh, uh, do we have also have a, a structure for the README in the uh, community handbook as well, right now? Well, I think the I think once this I think this this, this particular template would would be added to the to the handbook uh, mm -hmm. for any future working groups, uh, but the uh, the, the, the handbook exists within the governance repo, so the governance repo is actually going to probably need this README as well. Right. That can be done, I guess. Um, the, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so I was going to say the, uh, the, the modified portion that would exist on the website is probably the front part because, the, because we wouldn't be identifying specific working group information, right? Yes. So. Um, or Don, could you scroll down a little bit? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, so regarding the contributor section, I had an idea that instead of, um, uh, we could, we would be listing each maintainer, but we could also create a team of them for each repository that can be seen in the comment. I know in a, in a prior discussion, we had actually had, uh, we had had the thought of not listing every maintainer or every admin, but having each working group nominate two individuals to be the contact person for the, for the group and just listing those two people on the README. Uh, Am I remembering that correctly, uh, Matt? I think you were part yes, of that. You are. Sorry, I'm off video. I'm about ready to be on video, but yes, you remember that correctly because we were always off on our maintainers versus like what GitHub said and then what we had in our README. So we just thought it would be yeah. easier to have points of contact. I actually wonder if we should do this um, do this a little differently. Like the way that 
the way the CNCF does this, for example, for all of our CNCF projects is that they have, for things like working groups, there, there are chairs. So they have like two people who are responsible for, you know, making sure the meetings happen, making sure that they're, um, you know, that basically that everything happens within the working group that's supposed to happen. And they call them chairs. And those are the people who are listed on the the readme files. And then there are also a bunch of other like maintainers who can approve and merge and do other things within within the repositories. Is that, would that be a way to go for these or do we not want to use the kind of it, chair? I think, I think that fits exactly with what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good idea, actually. Do you want to rename this? Yeah, chairs. Cheers. Right. Yeah, those are, yeah, just the people because those are the people you need to coordinate with. Uh, uh, another doubt like, was like, oh, go ahead. Another doubt was like uh, below it website release contribute repel. I'm not exactly sure even what this means. Uh, so the the website maintains a list of all of the contributors to the chaos project. It is a really big, long list. Uh, maintaining those lists are problematic. Uh, so to the part of the conversation we've been having about this readme is things that need to be maintained in multiple places should probably just be maintained in one place. And then, and then we point at it. Uh, so, since the website has that full contributor list, maybe this is where we just point to that contributor list. I like that idea. Oh, you were saying something. Oh, I just said I, I like that idea. I think that's a good idea. I uh, know I was talking about Kevin actually. Oh, okay. uh, no, I was I was not saying anything. Uh, I will say something now, though. Uh, the one one caveat for that is that it's the full list for all of chaos. It's not working group specific, and I, I don't think that matters. Uh, are you talking about the list that is actually included in the PDF release, like yes. in the second page? Yes. Oh. Great. Okay. Right. Excellent. So, uh, uh, are we not crediting the people who are working within that group or it'll be just an entire credit to the entirety of the chaos project? So as you, as you know, there is a area for contributors to be listed on individual metrics. Yep. Uh, and I think that's the place where we can have that individual, I worked on this thing. Uh, and then as far as the, the working group goes, I think most people belong to multiple working groups anyway. True story. Uh, so identifying them as a common working group contributor uh, doesn't have, uh, I, I don't know that that's as important. So I think just pointing to the full contributor list from the working groups yep. is. Uh, I would then propose is like, we should uh, rename it something like uh, contributors to the Kios project and provide the link to the web page rather than just. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was the name again? Contributors to the, uh, so like under the yes. contributors. It'll be like, uh, yep. Uh, all the contributors to the chaos project, I guess, would be the... Maybe something like that, chaos project contributors? Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, I mangled something when I did that. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, anything else you want to talk about on this on this document, Yash? No, thank you, everyone. Thank you. I do. I do have a couple more general questions about this this process. What's the? Do we have a timeline for refreshing all of the readme's? Uh, not currently. We do not okay. have a timeline. Okay. Are there uh, are there documents that need to be created that we're going to point to? Um, not as it currently sits. That I can think of. Oh, yeah. Sean's Like the, the I don't contributor, think so. The contributor I MD guess. document, does that exist? Yeah. And does it exist at a high enough level to uh, that it works for all working groups, for example? I haven't inventoried all working groups, but we did make a point of having a document for contributors. And that's one of GitHub's community standards. Like, there's certain documents they ask you to have. Right, so every working group has a contributor.md file, I, but uh, the thought I on the readme is that they we, should. Yeah. The thought on the readme is that we point to one master contributing file that has high enough, high enough kind of general directions that they should be able to contribute to all of the working groups, right? And then the 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 contributor file within the readme would have specific directions for that working group, but it would also point to the, the high level how to contribute to chaos. How does that follow the CNCF model that you're familiar with, Don? Oops, sorry, I went on mute when there's a siren outside. Um, I, I think it's similar. So the CNCF projects tend to be very different. So they all have their yeah. own contributing document, but this is similar to what they do actually with the code of conduct, which is each project has a code of conduct file in their repository, um, in every repository, because that's what GitHub looks for. Yep. But that um, that code of conduct in the repository generally just points to the CNCF code of conduct and says, we follow the CNCF code of conduct, you can find it here. Okay. So I would see this being as something similar. We could put, that way we don't have duplicated information across all of the contributing MD files for right. all of the chaos working groups. You can have all the common stuff, the stuff that, <coughs> not common, all of the um, all of the, the things that are across all of the working groups in one main document. Yep. And then and then we can point to it from these, you know, the working group ones. I mean, I don't know for common, I don't know, I don't know if there'd really be anything different than what might be in the overall one. But for some of the other working groups, I guess maybe there are some differences. I think there are, there are differences on top of the, the regular stuff though. It's not, uh, yes. not they're, they're not run in a completely different way. It's just some some, some specifics of how they, how they organize. Mm -hmm. Okay. Matt, you look like you're thinking. I am. I, I mean, like I'm because I, I I hang out in a lot of the working groups, and they all actually run like really similarly at that like ninety eight percent level as far I as agree. well. You know, we all use the spreadsheet. We all use issues and pull requests. We all aim towards the <coughs> release. We all use Google Docs. Yeah. Like, I mean, we all, we do all of these things. So I'm trying to even think, like, I was trying to think of like what even might be specific for common. I think risk has some things that are a little, a little different. And yeah. I don't think common does though. I think if they have a standard structure, maybe we can revisit, I would suggest we revisit over time uh, if they evolve away from each other because I, I don't want to point all the working groups to a, one readme link because that feels like it could become chaotic at the minute a working group decides they want to do something a little bit different. Yeah, I think the, I think the working groups should have space in their, their contributing to personalize it if they need to. Mm -hmm. uh, but it should, but I, but I do think we need to, we need to point back to that one main content area which kind of describes the general process. Mm -hmm. uh, I think like uh, README can be customized based on the working group, but contributing or code of conduct 
even licenses, these three files need to be standard entire chaos for all the working groups. I think gen generally what we're talking about here is that the uh, so the structure the structure of the README needs to be the same, but the structure of the README will allow for some personalization in the working group. Yes. Uh, but the, the main purpose of that README is also going to be to point to the, the shared code of conduct, the shared contributing documents, the the all of those those sh the shared process yes. information that can help people learn how to participate in chaos in general. Uh, yes. And then to uh, and that's where to I said Don that. and Don's points, the these these repos actually will have to have contributing MD documents in them. And they will have to have code of content conduct documents in them as yeah. well, because GitHub looks at that and yeah, like I mean, having contributing us, code of, right? Yeah, like having committing contributing code of conduct point to a, a central doc somewhere seems okay to me because those probably don't change very often. I, I but, think I've yeah. seen the readmes evolve enough over time that I wouldn't want to make it as like just a here's your readme. For each working group yet anyway but i think the i think the the contributing document if it exists in the repo yeah that also has space for some personalization but the oh, it for does. the group. but the main goal should be to point to that yeah i think that's a lot easier document <clears throat> i can't remember the last time we updated contributing yeah, I, like I have participated in a couple group. of working groups and I don't see these files like contributing code of conduct files or license files ever being updated in the working groups. It's just there. That's where I was proposing like, yes, we keep these three documents as a standard document and point to the main repo, like entire chaos. And we have this uh, standard format of readme with the flexibility of adjusting for each group. Yeah, and I, and I would add that the uh, the goal is to reduce duplication for most for documents that are used in other places. So the, the the question should always be: Does this is this document duplicated in every working group? And if it is, can we create a master version of it uh, and just point to it? Yes. So I found an example. Um, here, so this is a, a sub provide a sub uh, project of the mm -hmm. Kubernetes community, and that's what they've done. So that's perfect for they have a contributing MD file. It says, you know, here's here's the real contributor guide, which happens to be the one under Kubernetes community, which is kind of the sort of the main default Kubernetes one for projects that don't have anything specific. Um, and then there are some Kubernetes projects that are very specific. So I was just looking. The cluster API, for example, has some. Um, interesting nuances, and so they've written their own contributing guide because it's completely different than some other areas within Kubernetes. Does that group point to this guide that your cursor is on right now, or do they just kind of, you know what I mean? Do they say there's a high level guide here, but our specific stuff is this? Um, no, oh. I, it depends on each, each, I think each SIG working group handles it differently. Gotcha. Um, okay. Some of them, I glanced at the cluster API one and it looked like they'd written their own complete one. I think it may be pointed to some common elements like the, the DCO instructions or something like that. What's the, see that the list you have under contributor guide right there? See where it says welcome prerequisites. What's the last one? Where does that point you to? What, what repo is this in? That's the main one, isn't it? It's the repo, yeah. community. So yeah. the community repo is, is where a lot of the contributor documentation okay. lives. Okay. So this is, we, we put together in the Kubernetes community a, a very specific like contributor guide. So this is the contributing files are part of this guide. Um, so some people use this and some people have written their own based on things okay. that are different for their particular group. But even the last one that you showed does reference this document, even though they have their very specific things that they would like to, that, not that one, not the other one, yeah. the more complex one, but okay. I thought would be, this is the example here. And then if you want to have any personalization for the working group, 
you have a second header underneath this <coughs> where it where you can add some specific information about the working group. Uh, but that but that top bit would be the could be the same for all all repositories. Agreed. I also just did a quick scan on codes of conduct, and thankfully they're the same. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, <laughs> pretty sure they were just copied and pasted at the origin of every repo and never touched. Like we came to an agreement as a community early on on what that would be. So can you go back, go up, go just to the cloud provider Azure top level link there? Do they have a README in here? Oh yeah. Where is it and where does it point? Does it like um, point to like a master README or I'm, um, I'm sorry, uh, code of conduct, <laughs> get my yeah. words. Oh, sorry, code of conduct. But yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, so that, like, like that, I think that's perfect. Yep, yep, yep exactly. Um, and then for the, for the common working group, who, who would the chairs be? Um, I'm obviously mm -hmm. happy to be one of them, but I would yeah. need a co-chair. I think it's... Mm -hmm. Think about it. Do you have we a preferred co-chair? I mean, these, you these can draft a co-chair. Do we want to do it informal or do we want to have some sort of formal process with I'm nominations not, and things? I mean, I don't want to make it too formal. <laughs> I want to <laughs> vote. We already spent 25 <laughs> minutes governing context. this working group. <laughs> we spend half our time governing right now, but it, it's important to have these discussions. Should we should we write a job description for the chair before we decide if we want to do it? <laughs> yeah, we have to run it through HR first, though. <laughs> I mean, I am um, happy to do it. I'm always I seem to be kind of the second person to like when you can't make yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, you're uh, yeah. So I I'm totally happy to do it. I think. Is there anybody, anybody else that wants to volunteer? Yes, we can have more than two. I know my name's already going to be on a couple, so I don't want to be named on it <laughs> more than two. You want to spread yourself too thin. I just want to be named on more than two because I mean, can't service that more than that, I think. Yeah. Okay, that, um, that makes sense to me. Um, um, Yash, any, any other questions for us on this? Yeah, I had one more idea. I saw that uh, we have like, the project you just showed on, mm -hmm. it had like, it guided to a common code of conduct file. So maybe instead of having a code of conduct file, like we'd be having one in each repository, but that can point to a master code of conduct file in the community handbook. Yes. Would that be done? That's what yes. I think we agreed to for code of conduct and for contrib contributing. Contributing. Yeah. contributing. In Agreed. general, yeah, in general, Yash, that's mm -hmm. the model that we always want to follow. So if the if a document exists in multiple places and there's there's duplication and redundancy, then we would prefer to have that document exist in one place and just point to it. Uh, and the, right now, I think what we're thinking is that the place that that should exist is probably in the governance repo as part of the chaos handbook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. OK, thank you, Yash, so much for your work on this. We, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Agreed, yes. Um, is, there, is there anything else we need to do on this? Um, plus one. Um, I assume we just leave this issue open, and then um, eventually we'll once you've talked to all of the working groups, we can make the make the changes. Yeah, yeah I guess once we have the required PI, we can then close this. Okay. So to your earlier question, Don, like what's the timeline for this? Yeah. Um, yeah maybe we, Yash, you could think about a timeline now, because I think this has been circulated to every working group. Uh, risk has still not gotten, but today I think. Okay. Um, so at that point, I'm guessing it's going to be like kind of thumbs up from everybody. And yeah. so I think at that point, we could just start rolling this out. And Risk has got quite a bit on the agenda today. So I probably won't take this item first, given 
I think we'll just say, here's what it is. <clears throat> Take a look at it. This is what we agreed to in a couple other working groups in terms of the pointer documents and see if there's any discussion. I guess I can get started with the timeline. Yes. Sounds good. That's pretty much it. Good plan. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks. Um, so we, we spent we spent 30 minutes on, on that, which was time well spent, because I think that was something we definitely needed to go through. Um, but given that we only have 15 or 20 minutes left, uh, are there any of these items that are on the agenda that are super urgent that we have to do today? Or should I go back and start going through the issues? I did notice we had two PRs we needed to look at. So unless there's anything super urgent on the agenda. Okay. No, I'm happy to go back to the issues and PRs. Cool. Um, it's always actually one of the more satisfying things with this working group is that we actually work through issues and PRs. <laughs> um, standardizing the repository. Um, uh, yeah. there I can talk, talk about, about this issue. Please. So if you go to the uh, working group common repository, you will find that there is a directory called template folder, uh, which actually contains two markdown files. Uh, the first one is the common template.md, which is nothing but a duplicated uh, matrix markdown file. Uh, it's a duplication from chaos slash matrix uh, repository. And the second one is file name convention.md. And uh, I have already duplicated the stuff from this file into the community handbook and the matrix repository. And they're already merged. So I think we can delete this directory. So. I made a PR to delete, uh, delete this directory. Plus one. Okay, so let's just have a look at that PR real quick. Does anybody have any concerns about deleting the templates directory? No, none at all. Okay, I agree. I am all for getting rid of duplication. Um, let me go ahead and merge that. Okay, done. That always feels good to get your pull requests merged. I know that's how I feel in other projects. Yeah. Like, Finally, I don't have to think about it anymore. It's done. Uh, um, actually, I was having one more issue, and yeah. that was with the readme's in the focus areas. So let me share some links. Like there was some inconsistency in the readme's for the focus areas. Uh, for example, if we uh, let me share the link. So if we see the readme for this one and for what and who, and then again for uh, work group evolution one. Actually this problem is across all the working groups are not for this particular uh, common one. And one in the security as well. Uh, yeah. So Ritik, are there, I, if I am probably wrong, but I seem to think that common and DEI follow a similar model and that actually uh, there is inconsistent inconsistency in the common one. If you go to the other focus areas like this one in what there is no heading on the top of the readme that uh, which focus group this is. And if you go to the who one, then there is a subheading referring to the who focus area. So during the uh, formation of metric PDF release, this adds as an extra subheading in the PDF, uh, which causes this uh, malfunction. And in other ones, uh, for example, in the uh, work group evolution, this format is entirely different. Gotcha. Mm. Yeah, for example, oh, we have some extra it. metadata at the end. And Ritik, this is related to, Ritik has been working on the automation of the release for the yeah, like, actually, by yearly is... release. And I think mm -hmm. creating consistency here helps <laughs> that overall process towards release. But for the, for the release, you're pulling, you're pulling the focus area information from each working group currently, rather than the, uh, yeah. the, the focus group. I was actually the picking up the repository. tables from this. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, which so that's fine, and that does that matches the uh, the uh, issues that we we have with with redundancy and duplication. However, if we are pulling if we're pulling this information from each individual working group for the chaos release, then these documents have to be part of the release process itself as well, and they needed they need to be included in the uh, review. Uh, so otherwise, these these pages can uh, uh, the the editing would throw off the uh, the editing of these pages would throw off the review process. So one of the things we could do that would help this. So if you look, a lot of the um, um, a lot of the projects that I work on have, have things like auto-generated files, for example. So I'm not saying we should auto-generate the focus areas files, but what we should do is have a comment at the top, which explains how the file needs to be formatted and the fact that it's used and it's pulled into the release and to give people some, some guidance about updating it. So in this one, it's like, don't update this directly. And this gives you a link to the place where you go to um, to update it. But in, in the case of, you know, what you're talking about, Riddick, you could put your instructions in here that say, you know, there should not be a, there shouldn't be a header, there should be a table, there should be whatever it is that you need in order to make the release automation work. We should document it in a comment right at the top of the file. Uh, so you're suggesting that we should have some standard structure for all the readmes in the focus areas. If you're going to pull them into the release and use that as part of the automation, yeah. then you probably should. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. So is done is the proposal. Can you go back to like one of the chaos things? So to, to standardize this page and then the next process would be to create the file that you showed. Is that right? the Kubernetes file? No, for this would this would actually be, if you go to, um, so what I'm proposing is that at the top of this file, we add a oh, comment gotcha. that provides instructions about editing the file and what not to do. And lets people know that if they, if, if they do something wrong, they're gonna uh, make our release automation more difficult. I gotcha, okay, thanks. And I'm not, uh... I'm not a hundred percent certain that we want to that we want to pull from these locations. Uh, so it, it it adds complexity to the review process. Uh, I mean, it, it helps with the automation, but it adds complexity to the review process. Uh, uh, so can we combine all the readmes to a separate directory, uh, like? Particularly for this process, yes, that that would be my, that would be my that would be my preferred uh, uh, method to to combine all of the all of these focus group readmes into a into another markdown document uh, and pull it from there. Mm -hmm. Kevin, I have been working on the same idea, and I think that this job has already been done. If you see the website repository. Yep. The metric tables are already there. So yep. I suggest that uh, we directly pull from there. So pulling pulling from the metrics tables file so that that file does it adds an element where a uh, where a human being has to be involved in the, the release process to kind of sign off on the release. Uh, so that's a little bit more work for a person and it removes some of the automation. Uh, but I think it helps with the review process and the, uh, and the creation of the, the release notes as well. Uh, so I know it, uh, it's probably counter to automation, but, I, but I, I think it may be important for the process to have the, to pull from that metrics table file rather than automating it from the working groups. But I'm open to discussion on that. We can we could talk about that uh, the the common common working group. 
discussion with us. Okay, well, why don't, why don't you all chat amongst yourselves and figure out what you need to, uh, just confirm what you need to do for the, for the release process. Um, and then, and then come back and let us know if there's anything we need to do to change our um, focus area. Read me files. Is that I, I would I would agree that a, a standard template for these would be nice as well. Yeah, agreed. I'm just going to say I heavily defer to Kevin on this as part of doing the release for years and really knowing all the nuances as part of that and balancing against efficiency, the open comment period, the amount of human involvement, the desire to automate. So I think. Kevin really sees that very, very clearly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and my take on this was let us know um, how we can help make your life easier. So let us know if there's anything we need to, to change. We're happy to do that. St standard yeah. templates make the entire process easier. <laughs> uh, and there's certainly, there certainly is room where we could pull these readmes in an automated way into the master document that we're talking about. Uh, okay. But for the release itself, I would prefer not to pull from, from these individual readmes. I would prefer to pull from that other, ma the master document that we're talking about, so. Okay. But my mind could be changed, so. Okay, well, like I said, let us know if there's anything we need to, we need to change. Um, so that was, let's see. So this issue, is this, um, is this just yeah, about this issue is over. I will just close this now. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Wow, I cannot type. Okay, done. Uh, there's one more pull request. Let's look at that first. Added the full code of conduct. Well, we may. I think this is what we decided not to do. Yeah, as based on the earlier discussion, we're not yeah. doing. So we should have a hyperlink here pointing to towards the governance report. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. And somebody pulled that out and put the whole code yeah. on. Did they do this for all of the working groups and have some of the other working groups wow. merge them? I don't know. <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> I think I can confirm. Some of the working groups did merge. Oh, okay. Um, so who, does somebody want to volunteer to sort this out? Um, I would, yeah, I mean, I would close, not merge this pull request, mm -hmm. close it and just maybe just say, based on a discussion, we're gonna just point to a single code of conduct for yep. ease of management sake. And then I'll check, I can go ahead and check some of the other repos. I mean, I can do it right now. Yeah, because you might need to revert these, these yeah. last merge. Um, yeah. I think that it's not that big of an issue because when we'll uh, add the readme, at that time we can directly delete, uh, you know, uh, delete the full thing and just add two, three lines. Exactly, yep, cool. Do we have a, in the governance repo, do we have a template folder? Because just through uh, just through this conversation today, we've identified what a, a README template, a contributing template, a code of conduct no. template, a uh, we have a handbook. Handbook. That's it. That's the only folder. Any other stuff is like. Some code, yeah, yeah, metrics templates. Uh, yeah, the metrics template currently sits in the metrics, the slash metrics place. So that that should probably come into the. That should probably come into governance. Yeah, we could, and I mean, to be honest with you, that's pretty much all the metrics repo does at this point. Mm -hmm is hold that template. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a whole repo to hold one markdown file. <laughs> oh, that makes sense to me, because then we can get rid of a repo too. The irony of not having a metrics repo in the chaos project, but still. 
uh, we're, we're decentralized, right? So the, the metrics are, they exist at the working group level. They do. Okay. Um, we are just about out of time. Um, do we have Georg on the call? No. No, okay. So we'll skip this one. I think we talked about it last time. Um, and then the release notes, that's one that stays open. And then these are new metrics that were on the agenda, but that we didn't didn't get to this time. Uh, so hopefully we can we can do this next time. Gosh, I hope someone was taking notes because I was not. Um, were there any action items? I think one, let me put it in. One is for Yash to get a timeline for the read me. So what do we exactly want in the timeline? Um, just a sense of maybe how you would plan on, I mean, it shouldn't be that complicated. So just the timeline has included so far unofficially, I think you attending pretty much every working group meeting and kind of circulating this idea and getting feedback, which is awesome. So then at that point, I think it's really just Maybe a timeline doesn't need to be made. Really, it's just about kind of finalizing the circulation with the risk working group and then just issuing the PRs that help standardize that those readmes. That'd be about so it. Before uh, before you you do the PRs to the individual working groups, let's do a maybe we should do a PR to the governance repo and move your template into a templates folder for the README. Uh, right. and uh, the template, uh, current template requires uh, this one. Uh, are we talking about the Google Doc? Yeah, so yeah, pull up the Google Doc again. Yeah, so convert this, convert this into a markdown file and put it into the, uh, the governance repo in a templates folder. Uh, and then from there we can we can get. Uh, uh, yeah, from there we can get on to for each working group. Yeah. And then within within that templates folder, I think we also move the the metric template markdown file in, and then we also start creating templates for those other redundant documents. Uh, and those templates will be smaller because the, the contributing is basically just gonna be a pointer, uh, a, tem a template, a template uh, file that basically just has pointer information that points to the code of conduct or the uh, contributing document or. All right. Okay. Um, I think that's probably for the day. I was just going to look and make sure that I don't have any conflicts with next week or next two weeks. So our next meeting is on the uh, on the 13th. So um, what I'll probably do is move move the agenda items that we didn't get around to and just move those to the um, the agenda for the for the 13th. And feel free to add things to the agenda that we need to talk about on the uh, on, in the next meeting as well. For the next community call, we should probably add the discussion of working group chairs. Yes. To the to the Tuesday yeah, I meeting. Did that. I okay. did that already. Cool. I and I actually should be able to attend next week. I think. I know I've missed I've keep missed the last few because of meeting conflicts. Just keep me posted. Okay. Anything else we need to talk about? 
I'm good. I'm going mushroom hunting this afternoon. Oh, Matt, it's so funny. Right after we'd had that conversation, the next day, my mom posted a picture of the two morels that they found in the woods. Ah, awesome. <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> okay, now that we're out of mushroom hunting news, um, thanks everybody for participating. This was a super productive meeting, which I like to see. And everybody have, have a good day. Thanks, everybody. You, you too. Bye. Bye-bye.